I'm running this brief testimony to you, Mr. Holman, about your company, Father's Time, and your product, A-Game. I first want to commend you for creating such a great herbal formula. I felt as if I was on a downward course. First I suffered from high blood pressure and high cholesterol, and then diabetes. Not to mention my lack of enthusiasm and sexual drive. But thanks to A-Game, those diseases are part of my past. I am a new man. Something told me to keep going. I've taken A-Game for several months now, and it has had a positive, dramatic impact on my life. I have vitality again. I feel invincible, powerful and focused, and my numbers have reversed to the joy of my family and doctor. As far as my bedroom goes, I've tried the popular pills once or twice, mainly out of desperation. Personally, I don't like unnatural synthetic stuff in my body. Oftentimes they didn't work and reading about the side effects can be pretty scary. I don't know, they aren't sure if it will fix my problem, but ruin several other organs in the process and they have no clue how it will affect me in the future. I need a game. It's all natural, and your unique blend is unlike anything else on the market. A game gives me the strength and energy to be at my best day in and day out. It just works. So, thank you for supporting my journey. I can now tell others, never, never give up. Sincerely, one happy customer. Hey, what's good, YouTube? It's your man Ronan back with another one. And today's conversation is brought to you by A Game. And much love to the A Game Nation. Shout out to all my subscribers, both new and old, and uh, all the veterans across the board. Salute to you guys. Hope you guys are enjoying the holidays. And I want to give a message before uh, the new year of 2022. You guys, be safe out there, which leads me to this conversation right here, right now. It's two questions among many I'm going to ask you guys, but mainly those two. Are you a gynocratic golem? And number two, if you are that, what are you willing to do to break the spell? See, the title of this is Breaking the Gynocratic Golem Imprint. How will you be remembered? And this has been on my head for a long time and seeing things transpire in this space in my time here, and not just in this space, but life in general. And this applies to all my veterans, both in the military theater, on Liberty, or in the civilian theater. But to every man who's enduring spiritual warfare in real time, especially now. So let's break down what a golem is. <clears throat> A golem, which is now a mindless lunk or entity, which is entirely created from inanimate matter, usually clay or mud, who serves a man under controlled conditions, but is hostile to him under other conditions. Continuing, the human being artificially created by cannibalistic rites, also known as a stupid or clumsy person a blockhead, an automaton, and to, um, mutic uh, literature referred to as an embryonic or incomplete substance, is an animated anthropomorphic, that's a loud word, being in Jewish folklore, which is entirely created from inanimate matter, usually clear mud. It can be a victim or villain, 
Jew or non-Jew, man, woman, or both. Now, I started that off, in which I'll go into anthropomorphism. It's a noun. It is the attribution of human traits, emotions, and intentions of non-human entities. It is considered to be an innate tendency, excuse me, of human psychology. Better known, shout out to my brother, Sheep Stay Sleep, saying human doings. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this conversation up is because all the years, a lot of us have to really sit down and swallow the truth for what it really is. Are you in a dead end job? Are you existing in a relationship? Being a baby mama situation, a dead marriage in a situation where your family is listless, co-conspirators to your current condition? Are you in a unit, a company, or what have you that does not have your best interest at heart, giving you more shit than a little bit? Are you under the charge of a shitbird, a blue falcon, or an individual who is ran by this lofted sense of pseudo power to lord over you this in many scenarios can let you know you are part as a um, gynocratic golem there are many men due to being raised a sense of trauma or your connections to certain people which if we're not careful, they will speak all these spells of containment, condemnation, limit us from our greatest power, which is our masculine light, which we're able to master that and see ourselves in a better perspective and move accordingly will be some of the most unstoppable motherfuckers of the planet. However, Let's look at this at different angles. If we talk about the gynocracy, it's an adjective. Government by women or by a single woman. Now I bring this up with the gynocracy because how many of us are living our lives vicariously through the trauma created by the women we have allowed into our sphere? Be it those who birthed us, be it those we had relationships with, things that have been undone by their doing or us dodging accountability for what we contributed to it, aside from a lot of them a stage to show their unnatural asses. Or as a collective, where we allowed ourselves to be governed by rugged individualism, which never served us any good as a group. If you look in this space, and I've seen this in real time for myself, we have incel income. Individuals who do have the resources, the time, the information and ability to help provide and promote agency for us. But number one, because they've been groomed to do so, they don't have an appetite for actual agency. You can look in any space in any place that talks about the empowerment of men, any space that talks about us taking accountability for the shit either that's being thrown at us, created by us, or stirred amongst or within us. There's no money in that. But see, you being a gynocentric golem or given the imprint, where do you see the money go? Where do you see the focus and attention go? Anything governed by Punani politics. You have brothers in this space who promote the ideas that are needed, which we are supposed to oppose this gynocratic uh, environment. Meet with great opposition. You have brothers like LAR who will teach you many things how to deal with fighting for your children, which is a very bloody war 
on the spiritually and mostly side. And granted, he does get the attention he needs, but he could get more. You got brothers like the Style OG. You got brothers out here across the board from different walks, from Martin Luther King Street to Wall Street, who initially aspire to help brothers and promote their perspective of agency. But in response to that, you have a myriad of brothers out here who will find any other way to literally make excuses and keep monetizing mediocrity in this space and abroad. You can go any channels and you see where the focus is. is. And I'm not knocking individuals who create certain channels. Some things need to be highlighted. But again, if it's all talk, if it's all pursuit of confirmation bias, if it's all about um, running around with the severed heads of, figuratively, of exes and wounded uh, individuals who have wounded you or have cast a spell upon you, which is based on trauma, reducing your feelings, thoughts, ambitions, to throw you off kilter, off course, on a path of self-destruction. This is what we mean by the gynocentric golem imprint. See, golems, by design, they're created to simulate human beings to serve a purpose. Now, you've seen them in video games and whatnot, in movies and whatnot, but we're talking about in real time. See, when you're a golem, most cases... This is what you ran by. That's what's sitting over your head. As a golem, you don't think and move on your own. That ca- So now, to an extent, these spells that are cast upon you will show you how far along people have put that incantation to you. As you see with wealth, you leave with no detachment. Out here, there's golems out here who have no limit when it comes to leisure. It's always silly time. Never getting back to the business of getting ourselves right plus the brothers and men, which we talk about agency. When it comes to no loyalty, oh, there's a whole heap of spineless golems who want to run around and keep things stirred up. Professional bullshit artists. The other part of that, most of them are not loyal to the mission, using their profession in order to unfuck a lot of these things. Lack of discipline, that's a given. No fair structure, no peace, no standard, no love and support, no care, no truth. And again, as a golem, there are many people who are left screaming in the huss, not just in their physical form, but their lies, the lies they live until they perish. See, everything by this design, you're turned on your head and see your neck is not built to hold that kind of weight. That way your body crushes the skull and you'll be another headless gynocratic automaton at your detriment. So when we think about that, we're built for much more. As I'm saying, many times over in this space and abroad, you will hear conversations And if you listen carefully, it's not that man himself solely. You can hear the spells that have been cast upon that dude, be it the trauma that they've endured, that they are enduring, or because they are paralyzed with fear. They're unwilling to break that limiting husk they shamble through life in. See, with golems, you can put them out there. They don't move on their own. Without that spell via narrative, via that fear, what have you that is counterproductive to growing and maturing your masculine light? You always be a slave to the plantation. And with that being said, let me address something too. See all this uh, caterwauling while certain conversations are legit and complaints. What you're hearing literally is the limited access to the juke joint that is attached to the plantation. 
See, if you think about the color purple and Shug had her little juke joint, oh, that place made a whole lot of fucking money. But see, while they were looking for a temporary escape from the uh, pain and the everyday stressors being on the plantation, as long as an individual is able to get his meat wet, or he's able to lose himself in the fantasy. He tends to lose his eye on the ball, which we have right here. See, there are many issues that we deal with in real time. It isn't just these 10. There's a whole heap more. We don't have the agency if we're not dealing with our mental health issues, sexual traumas, the treatment of men. You see in our boys out here getting slaughtered for sport, how they're being broken by these back-footed uh, bylaws and bullshit that's out here. If you're not having legit in-depth conversations how to oppose the very environment that has kept, up, kept us enslaved in the place that we are here now, you're still in the plantation. If all you're doing is worrying about what's in your bag Versus what's in here and here and surrounding everything that will protect those things. Speaking on the legitimacy of actual brotherhood. To where we can maneuver as men. Take pride in being men. Show no shame in being it. You're literally still on a plantation because back in the days in the cotton fields, they did have their bag. And how many times over have you seen those guys filling those bags? literally drop dead. See, in this day and age, at least you have the common decency to get a fucking toe tag engraved to your liking. But what does it mean? It meant you lived your life as a golem. It meant you spent all your time pursuing all the exterior versus working on the interior. How many of us sons have seen our father's Weep in private. I saw mine. In doing any and everything to reclaim himself, to heal the inner child within him, himself. He was a big old kid. But there was a few times I did catch him weeping on his own, trying to save face. He didn't want to be ashamed of everything he's been doing, trying to provide. under the guise of what you see as a gynocratic system. What I want to say as a golem, all they, they can use the four Ps against you in a negative fashion. Of course, you're supposed to provide for the gynocracy. You're not supposed to provide agency for yourself and your brothers out here. You're not supposed to provi provide opportunities to mature your masculine light, your reputation. They only want problem solving when it benefits them. But how do you do that when you have individuals who thrive on creating problems? Anything you deal with emotionally, spiritually, socially, that doesn't matter. You're not supposed to solve your problems. All that is a waste of time and unbeneficial to the gynocracy. How do you protect yourself in this day and age? See, when you're a golem, your feelings, thoughts, and opinions don't matter if you're not out there pandering or kissing ass or submitting to the punani politics of the day and agents of it. They only want procreation in order to work on the provision part. How many times have you had to secretly elope with your passions? When have you been given the time to reconnect with your dreams healthily, getting that needed sleep? Because that lack of sleep will aid you in many ways. Put more stress on your heart and your body. Bring those cortisone levels down. When have you been able time to put that work into the gym to better yourself? Not just for your physical health, but to mental health to get that aggravation out. Our life expectancy has dropped three years. That should mean something. But see, when you're a golem, you're disposable. 
All you're going to hear is what have you done for me lately? You heard it in songs, media, all different things. Those are incantations to keep you remaining as a golem of convenience. Another version of a golem is a spiritually impaired mule of provision. Not just for the money. Sometimes they use you for their non-sexual attention. Wasting your time, your energy, your light, things of that nature. See, when you're a golem, you need to take of this. Instead of doing what you were naturally born to do with the provision, problem solving, and protection, procreate, procreate. what you've been doing is you've been given the gynocratic insight, which is farsighted by design. You're supposed to see everything gynocratic in a clear light, but when it comes to fixing you, it's all a blur, which leads you to nesting in nonsense, mediocrity. You were meant to solve certain problems, again, opposed environment. So instead of protecting your best interests and those who have earned your protection, you find the beauty in bullshit. Instead of procreating in the right masculine fashion, you'll be pregnant with excuses and problems. That's where the fertility is twisted, which leads into the chaos. Instead of having a level of order, system order and structure as men, you're all chaotic. You act catty. You like to run around and gossip. And not like the he she's out here in the world. And instead of taking leadership and onus in what you were meant to do and your purpose, you submitted into the gynocratic incantations left to keep you as a submissive dude. No level of empathy, but we're talking about a coward who can't even stand up for himself. Instead of polygamy part, instead of fucking the shit out of your purpose and making your money move multiple ways to where you can enjoy the fruits of labor in life. Or even with dealing with the women in general, which is more economical than anything but something else. More males have been hypergamous in a way. They jump from narrative to narrative. Many are barely faithful to the talking points that they spout off on. Any conflict creator, they will open their ears, ass, and attention to. Instead of having the strength to acquire power and know how to wield it, a lot of individuals become powerless while pursuing the company of powerful people or who they deem powerful to lord over them. Instead of opposing environment, creating culture, standing in their masculinity in a proper fashion. What they pass on a culture is translated into kicking the motherfucking can down the street. That is a problem with it. And if you look at this, it doesn't matter whatever pill or denomination you attribute yourself to. Golems can assume any different form. Fire golems, stone golems, water golems, air golems, whatever. When you break it all down, it isn't just what you're made of. It's what is fueled within you that adds mobility to what you're made of. Consistency, direction, strength. See, a lot of guys, what would they be without that gynocratic imprint, that narrative? They would be nothing. See, in the gynocracy, you're treated less than nothing. You are an automaton to agendas, the disposable pawns, and treated as such because you have no direction on what you need, what you stand for. And that is a problem. It doesn't matter if you say you're red, blue, whatever, doesn't matter. If you're governed by a gynocratic narrative, you can claim everything you want to be. You're still being led by the incantation of inconsistency, immobility, and rendered as sterile. Golems are created. They don't make shit happen. That is a problem. And that is not what men are meant to be, nor that's not what we do. 
I've said this before many times, the universe is literally in our nuts. Literally. If any gynocratic backfooted bitch wants to sit there and say, look, we are the mothers of the earth. Yeah, you require our energy, our light to create something. There are many times I pissed off many of chicks and say, look, replicate yourself. Now, some will take a little bit of displeasure from what I'm saying, but take that and spin on it. This is me speaking life into the brothers out here, and I'm not the only one here. There are many brothers who do not resign themselves in looking for sign language or confirmation bias. So when you are attuned to your masculine light, whether you're level or mastery of it, you ignore the shaming tactics. You'll give a middle finger to the insults, the guilt and the need to be right or more or less control. It goes back to being a golem. You will properly vet those individuals, both male and female, regardless of your relationship. You will vet them for the level of humility of who you are as a man. The onus, they'll take accountability and responsibility of what they do or allow to do in your space and out of sight of you. They will praise you for looking to grow and mature yourself as a man. They won't paralyze you with negative comments in sign language. And they will show empathy whenever you are feeling some kind of way. They will, they will recognize you as a human being, not a human doing. But we always speak on such things. But you notice if you allow yourself to remain as a gynocratic golem, a gynocentric golem, this would explain why the society is the way it is. It's about how you how we think and feel about ourselves, which is part of that gynocentric imprint, which allows them to create a culture of confusion and conflict within ourselves as men. How we speak to each other, about each other, how we do and act collectively as a group. And then it leads to the environment. If we allow this culture to crush us in the way it's been doing, then we are nothing more than masculine fertilizer meant to pass the generational curses, not just to those to follow us, but beyond us. So what do we do as men? If we do not change from being gynocratic, gynocentric, and pretty golems into men of principles and purpose. First and foremost, we need to start looking at things for what they really are. Number one, we need to start learning the spells that bind you and break both them and those responsible for your enslavement. Now I say this because in my personal experience, I know what it's like to be a gynocratic golem. Having people speak death into your life. Nearly have you divorce you from your purpose because my first love is always going to be art. And I'm starting to elope with it again for myself. How many brothers out here who are listening to the sound of my voice are doing the same thing or looking for ways to actually get the strength to do it? See, when you start seeing and recognizing the people who are wasting your time, abusing your light, taking advantage of who you are as a man, because it is a gift to give, but we got to start being sensible givers and giving to ourselves. This is why when you start becoming a sensible giver, you give people enough, you get people enough rope to redeem themselves or hang themselves. When you establish a system order and structure and parameters of people who you give leeway to lay, hey, you respect my space or respect my motherfucking distance. Once you Dispel those things. Divorce yourself from individuals who created those traumas from you. And it may sound extreme. Sometimes you take every personal effect that, that reminds you of that person. You put it in the shoebox or whatever you have it. And I've done this before. I dug a hole, poured gasoline, and burnt the fuck out that shit and buried it. Sometimes it has to take that in order to break those curses within ourselves. 
That way we start becoming legit curse breakers and teaching our peers, our sons, even our elders and turning them back into elders and right the ship as men. Now it's going to be one of the toughest parts. You got to pur purify yourself within the fire of unedited truth. And that second or consistent relationship that I had with two covert hyenas because they use emotional terrorism and spiritual terrorism to torture you. Control freaks. They will treat you as less than and they've broken bigger and stronger men from the inside out. When you start looking at yourself and recognizing who you are, what you were meant to be and what you were meant to do, you start cutting those ties, those trauma bonds that we so desperately cling to and start mending the wounds within ourselves. We start taking our spiritual stances seriously, which leads to our health. You see me posting videos in the gym. It is not just for show. This is leading by example. Little by little, defying the environment that lives on instant gratification. In time, you start seeing the changes. Having that personal training assessment, you start seeing where you're at. And little by little, taking those steps to see those gains and earn them. Appreciate the steps you make. Success is about momentum. When you start winning and being consistent with it, things start to become a little bit more easy. Now, new levels, new devils. That's part of it. Then you start mending, you start mending the bridges within yourself, you start repairing your family. And it doesn't have to be your blood relations, but your associates, your friends. Vetting those people with time, told trouble and threat. Seeing who's worthy to stick by you. Understand that certain people were not meant to go past certain chapters. Then you start working on your parents, taking a pride of how you look, not just as far as clothing wise, but out in society in man, as a man in general. You don't have people eager to see that they can put a battery in your back. Those devils that we deal with, they'll come with a level of caution. They will respect your distance. Or they'll talk their shit at a distance. Meanwhile, the people who have properly vetted, they can help you look better in how you treat yourself, which leads to your dwelling. You don't no longer have a house. You have a home, a place where you have peace and understanding and where you can relax. Meanwhile, we understand that peace of mind is not free. You'll be able to defend your dwelling, make a stand when people take a threat to your dwelling and who you are as a man and everything else pertaining will follow suit. When you start purifying yourself with the fire and the truth, you will not be a slave to these nonsensical narratives of confirmation bias to where you believe in every woman out here is fucked up. Yeah, there's, there's a level of crazy in a lot of these women. But when you start vetting them out and seeing things as they are, vetting them to see if they offer any of these, you won't literally be under the gun by lacking di discipline and dignity to endure these. These will be your tools to help you protect this which you should be giving to yourself, provision, problem solving, protection, procreation. This will help keep you sturdy, a level of systems, being able to move on your own without being a slave to a job. And people say, what have you done for me lately? You will have your own agendas. You will be selfless in the right way. People who have earned your time, your life, you are the prize. You have to start valuing yourself in that by establishing a level of order you can you can you'll use all the lines where the bullshit can manifest at your command and you got you sit there and let it be known this shit has to stop otherwise get the fuck out of my life or in my face that's how you establish structure what do you stand on what do you stand for and who do you stand with And finally,
reclaim your footing in order to redeem time and things lost to you. See, personally, I had to take some time to myself after that relationship. And I told that person, for your safety and my sanity, I had to get the fuck away from you. It isn't just that person. There are many people who are not adding value to your life. They don't respect your time. They don't respect your abilities. Understanding that you're respectively unique in what you do. I'm saying to my veterans out here, there are certain people in higher positions who see what you're capable of. But you got to start learning how to teach them how to treat you how you, and how you treat yourself. Don't just get caught up in the rank. But see how you rank among other men. Some individuals are cowards that hide behind the brass. But if we're really honest about it, some are even worthy of kissing your ass. Let that marinate for you internally. I don't want you to get a Article 15 or worse. But you have eyes. You have intuition and forethought. And you will see things for what they are and act accordingly. See, when you start, when they told me a little ditty in the, in the military, smooth is fast and fast is smooth. See, when you start getting your pace, talking about muscle memory, understanding what needs to be done and how we were trained as military men in the, in the world of chaos, when everyone's losing their shit, we can mentally slow everything down and move with accuracy and precision. We execute and make sure the mission is done. It's high time we start doing that for ourselves and each other. But we have to take command, which I've always said, we are the commanding officers of our lives, especially when we're out in the civilian theater. See, when we start doing that, we start redeeming the time, everything that was lost to us, getting that helpful sleep, getting that peace of mind. It tends to be uh, elusive to many of us. Having agency to where we can talk about the things that weigh us down and get that weight off our shoulders so we can move properly. Some brothers, be it civilian or military, we need to rely on. Which when we start fixing ourselves, we start addressing the problems that plague us to this day. So that we no longer serve as gynocratic golems who've been given an imprint to not move in the right fashion, but to remain broken dolls at their leisure. So when we start redeeming our footing, we break the spells and we make sure they stay broken because we start becoming appreciative of brotherhood, ensuring brothers are taken care of in the right fashion and doing what we were meant to do to the optimum way we were built to do it. So in closing, I want to say thanks for giving me your time. And I'm going to end it with asking these two questions you need to answer for yourself. You can put it in the comment section or send it to my email at genuinearticle75 at gmail.com and we can talk about it. Are you a gynocentric golem with a gynocratic implant, imprint? And if so, what are you willing to do to free yourself? As always, two things. It always takes a pussy to expose and control one. And number two, never allow your comfort zone to become your coffin. It's high time we stop being these screaming golems trapped in this husk that we call ourselves or our body or the body of men. We need to be Men who have trained and mastered and understand our masculine light and teach that to our guys, our junior guys of our peers and, and redeem those olders and actually get them to be functioning elders. Because we are sick and tired of having these burning libraries every time an older dies. A lot of us are the OGs now. It's time we get back to being curse breakers. Not just free ourselves, but free each other. And ultimately, we free others. So salute to you guys. Would you be careful out there? Be safe and simplify.